this is Wampire, uh, here to uh, talk about this uh, amazing Aikido teacher, Shioda Gozo Sensei. I was talking to a friend of mine and uh, we were talking about martial arts and stuff and he sent me this video which I had seen before. And uh, the thing about Shioda Sensei is he was a student of Ueshiba Sensei. Ueshiba uh, Morihei Ueshiba Sensei is the founder of Aikido, so he studied directly under the founder. And uh, the the thing is with Ueshiba Sensei, the problem is, um, a I don't think there is a whole lot of video footage with him. And then b the other problem is that they're in extremely poor quality. So thankfully, with Shioda Sensei, we get to see uh, there there's a lot more videos of him. And we actually, the quality is, is much, much better for us to see, even though what you're looking at right now is, is not. But, you know, the, it's, we can actually see what's, what's going on. So let, let me go ahead and, and uh, press play here so you guys can see what's up. And so he is uh, right there he is doing this event and he's explaining to the audience what's going on and you can see that he's this tiny uh, old Japanese man and uh, you know the guys that he's uh, uh, going up with against right here I mean these guys are much much bigger you know and and uh, the stuff that that you get to see is it pretty much looks superhuman um, it's it's some amazing stuff so let me see let me try to you know, he makes the stuff look incredibly easy. Uh, what once again, he makes it look like he's, um, you know, on on par with like uh, Spider Man or like he should be part of the X Men or the Avengers because it it really does look uh, superhuman. And I mean, you you see that he's really doing it effortlessly, and he's smiling and everything, and boom, right there. So, you know, when people see this kind of stuff, the first kind of question is, is it real, right? That, <laughs> that, that's the first question I get. There, you can really see him in action there. You can see that even though he's an old man, he has a lot of energy and he's very quick. And it, it's just incredible to watch, right? So, okay, let me try to pause that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the question is, is this real? And... Um, you know, to answer that question, first of all, this is called enbu in Japanese. Enbu. Bu means martial. En means performance. So this is a martial performance, in other words. Okay. So therefore, to answer the question, is this real? Uh, no, it's not real. It's it and. It was never meant to be real. This is this is a uh, demonstration, is what he's doing. So, absolutely, it's not real. And then you know people go, oh, so it's fake. But you know, you, you make it sound like it's it's a um, a con artist or a con job, and and that's not what is happening here. The skills, the techniques are all real. They're legit. It's just that this is not real life application. If he, if Shioda Sensei were to do this stuff in real life, it would look very, very different. Uh, what you're seeing right here, once again, is you know this is a choreography training. This is a performance. This is no different than like watching uh, a Hollywood movie, uh, like watching um, uh, what you call it, uh, Michael J. White in one of his fight scenes, uh, like watching. Uh, you know, a, uh, a professional ballet dancer. It's just what you're seeing is excellence of skill being performed, you know, like a, a masterful piano player. That's what you're seeing. So the skills are real, but it's not real combat, you know. And, and because it's real, it's not real combat, you, you can't... Uh, you know, we all get the wrong impression that that's exactly the way it would be if this guy were to go up against, um, you know, multiple attackers or he, if he were to enter the UFC, this is what we're going to see. And 
I 100% think no, that that is not what's going to happen, you know? And uh, yeah, um, so I, I hope that helps. So it's, it's real skills, real techniques, but it's not real life application, you know? And, and I think that throws off uh, a, a ton of people. They, they don't understand, you know, because they, they see this kind of thing and, and they think this is, this is what it would be like. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, once again, this is N boo, right? So what what you have to understand, right, is that th this was shot in um, I'm not even sure when when this was filmed. So this was filmed. I think it says 1970, 78, late late 70s or something. Okay, so if, if that's the case, there's been hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Aikido students trying to duplicate this. Okay, they've been training and they're trying to get to this level right and they can't and I'm, I'm not even talking about using it in the street or using it in a real fight or using it against the MMA fighter I'm not even talking about that I'm just talking about just doing it in a demonstration just doing it in the dojo in inside class and people cannot do it because they just this guy is at a different level okay just, just like there's there's thousands and thousands of people trying to, you know, learn boxing and kickboxing. And there's only one John Jones. There's only one Mike Tyson. There's only one Muhammad Ali. You know, those people are, are like a million and one. You, you, you have to understand that. Not everyone can become that, okay? So that's what you're looking at right here is that it's a tremendously high skill level. So when... So I definitely don't believe that Aikido, in order for it to work, you have to be at this guy's level. I Then to me, it, the art is crap. If it only works if you're a 10th Don or a 9th Don, then that's BS. Okay, so I believe Aikido can benefit anybody, but you're going to have to bring down the expectations like crazy. You can't have the same expectations that's what you're seeing here, where he's effortlessly throwing people at, you know, I don't know how old he is, uh, like 70 years old, you know, um, what is he, 75 years old? I, I don't know. But, you know, as an old man, just being able to toss around these young, way bigger, uh, you know, karate black belts or whatever they are, you know, it's no, no, you, you're going to have to bring down your expectation way, 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 way more. And work with that and and then you know people may not understand that and think why should I bring down my expectations that that uh, that doesn't feel right that doesn't feel realistic actually it is extremely realistic in fact you have to do it for example when you train in Brazilian jiu-jitsu jiu you know um, you always have to go well I could go for a triangle choke right here or an arm bar but what if it doesn't work well if it doesn't work you know, that's all just part of it. You have, if you expecting it to work every time and the first time it doesn't work, you're in a world of trouble. So you have to include failure into your style. So when you look at something like this, you are looking at the supreme skill level. And on top of that, it's not real life. Okay. This is a demonstration. So you're confused, you know, the people that go, that see this and, and they don't get it. They're super confused. They're confused by at least two different things. Number one is that, you know, this guy is at an extremely high level. You can't expect that of regular Aikido students or you can't expect that of, you know, just the average practitioner. And, and um, you know, the other thing is this is not real life, period. It, this is a demonstration. And, and I could tell you, for me personally, um, I've uh, I've used Aikido while I was doing something like MMA or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that was full contact, and you know it it helped me out and it worked great for me. But then you know people will always criticize and say stuff like, "Well, then you know you're you're not really using the full art. You're only using bits and pieces. Like you're only using the concept, or you're only using you know you're not really using." all of Aikido. Well, I, there is no rule that in order for me 
to use Aikido. I need to use all of Aikido and nothing else. And that's silly in itself. But I, I get what people are saying. You know, so for another example is like when you see someone like Ryoto Machida who comes from a traditional karate background and he became UFC champ, which is incredible. But you look at that and you go, yeah, he is, you know, he does move a little differently. His stance is a little differently from other fighters, but it's still mostly MMA that you're watching there. You know, it doesn't look like the karate, the super traditional karate where they're doing the forms. It doesn't look, he's still like, you could say he's a modified kickboxer, you know. So I, I understand that, you know, that people want to criticize like that. I, I get, I don't agree with it, but I get that, you know. So then you got to look at someone like um, uh, Kikuno. Um there is a competitor, a Japanese competitor named Kikuno-san, and that guy, he uses a legendary technique, a technique that is in the fables, that, that it, it, it's almost like in the ranks of like Din Mok. And it is called the Mikazuki Geri. The Mikazuki Geri is your crescent moon kick. And this is a legendary kick that says if you land it, you could drop the opponent with one hit, it hits a pressure point, and it leaves a mark like a, a, a crescent moon on the opponent's body. You know, it's, it is a move of legend and fable. Well, this dude, uh, Kikuno-san, actually competed in MMA and he's beaten opponents with this kick. And sure enough, when it lands, not every single time, but he has dropped opponents immediately, ended the fight immediately with this one kick. So that's where you go, holy crap, that exists. But let's look at it in perspective. This guy has never been at the level of where he's a UFC um, champion or you know completely dominating the UFC. We have not seen him at that level. So he's never been able to make it to that level, yet the technique has worked for him in real MMA fights. So you just have to bring down your expectations you know, and understand that this stuff, yeah, it can be very, very real. It can be. It's just, it's not going to work like what you're seeing here, you know. Uh, so please keep that in mind. And, and there are plenty of other examples that I could give you where, you know, you can see legendary stuff, you know, that, that would be like, like in a story um, where you go, really? Is that, is that what happened? Like, uh, uh, there's a match with uh, Satake, who is a former K1 competitor, but he comes from a uh, karate background. He fought Patrick Smith. So for those of you that are UFC fans, Pat Smith is one of the early UFC guys. And uh, they're fighting, and Satake does a, uh, a karate chop right on Patrick Smith's hand and instantly breaks it with a chop, you know? So I think it shows you that I think that was real. I don't see why it wouldn't be, but um, that it is possible. Things like that is stuff that you read in books, you know, th stuff that you, you would see in a, a comic book. But it is possible, you know, but you just got to lower your expectations, you know. So, yeah, uh, I hope that helps because when I watch something like this, it doesn't freak me out, you know. I don't, I don't go. No, oh, it's got to be fake. It's got to be fake. There's no way that's real, you know. I don't have to go there. I'm secure. I don't, you know. And the guy is amazing. But if he were to fight in real life, it wouldn't look like this. I get it. I know that, you know. Um, it would be different. Now, would he be able to apply some of these techniques? It depends, you know. Techniques are just tools. If he is able to to do it, he is. And if he's not, he's not. You know, it's <laughs> I don't know what you want from me. You know, there's no guarantee. Um, I remember I remember this guy. I believe it was him. He met Mike Tyson, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, they actually this was Mike Tyson in his prime. They actually met, and he wanted to work out with Mike Tyson, and Mike Tyson crew his crew was like no 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 uh the, the, this guy's worth millions and millions of dollars no way kind of thing you know i don't think shioda sensei would have hurt mike tyson but i think shioda sensei wanted to show mike tyson 
the effectiveness of, of Aikido, and it's completely different. I don't think they would have fought, you know, but I think he wanted to show you're a big, strong guy that's extremely athletic with superhuman, you know, athleticism, but, you know, in certain situations, if my technique were to come into play, you would be helpless. It's just, if they actually fought, would he be able to put Mike Tyson in that position? You know, we don't know unless they actually do it. We, we wouldn't know. My guess is that if they fought, if they actually fought, well, Mike Tyson is the expert in fighting. So Mike Tyson would have the upper hand. The self-defense situation is different. You don't start off going, are you ready? Are you ready? Go, you know? And one of the, the things that I could tell you guys uh, about this kind of thing was that this guy, Shioda Sensei specifically, he said that his ultimate Aikido technique was when someone came in to break into your home to kill you, you change that person and make him your best friend. Or maybe not your best friend, but you turn him into your friend, you know? That's what he said was the ultimate Aikido technique for him. And... I remember, you know, I'm not the best Aikido practitioner. I'm not even ranked, okay? So technically, I'm just a white belt in Aikido, but I understand the concept here. So I remember one time where I was in a public place and a group of guys, you know, they came out, they were pretty hostile, and, you know, they wanted to jump me. Their goal was to beat me up, okay? And somehow, you know, using the Aikido philosophy and concept, I was able to turn those guys into my friends. And I did. And to me, and, and I knew about this. It's not something I, I made up or something. I knew about the Aikido philosophy and, and whatnot. If I had used Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at the time, I think I would have been stomped on. Or I would have, maybe one guy I could have submitted, but the other guys... You know, would have stomped on me, kicked on me, and, and whatever. Um, if I had used Muay Thai kickboxing, I think same thing. I would have been punched and kicked from behind. If I had used Filipino martial arts and found an improvised weapon, I think I would have had a better chance. I would have kept the distance and, and used a weapon against them. But things would have been very ugly, very, very ugly. And I would have been scared for my own life the next day. So at that moment, maybe I would have been fine. But then what do I do about tomorrow and the day after? They're going to be looking for me and they're going to be armed. So I would have to like move to a different neighborhood, you know? So, um, but instead, Aikido pulled through for me. And like I said, I was able to, you know, read the, the vibe and, and, you know, tackle it in a way and change the vibe and turn them into my friends, you know? So that kind of hopefully gives you a demonstration. If you're thinking Aikido is all about um, these wrist locks that I'm supposed to get off of a punch or something, uh, I think you don't really, you have the wrong idea of Aikido, you know? So um, yeah, the that to me... Uh, it, it, it says that you have to understand the mindset. You have to understand, you know, the principles. If you don't understand that stuff, how is the technique supposed to work, you know? So if you want the Aikido technique to work, then, you know, it, it, and I think it can, even, even without understanding the principles, you know, uh, I've seen, I've seen guys, you know, uh, I remember this one guy, he was a, um, he, he had learned Aiki Jutsu type wrist locks. So we're talking the same moves like Kote Gaishi and stuff like that. And he went to a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school and, and they immediately put him in the guard and, you know, they were going to tap him out. But no, he, he submitted them with, with a wrist lock. And, and the attitude of the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys at, at that point was they were like, oh, it's a wrist lock. That doesn't count. You know, which I was kind of like, uh, no, it does. It totally counts. You just got wrist locked, dude. You know, that's, that's you. If this was a street fight, you would have lost right there, you know? So anything goes on the street and you totally got wrist locked badly. You know, you're, you would have ended up with a broken wrist. 
right there. So, you know, just from that sense, I think it's 100% possible, but, you know, the, the techniques can be used, you know, can be. Of course, it's hard, you know, even just getting a rear naked choke is extremely hard, but we all know it's extremely effective, you know, but yeah. I, I think there there is a whole lot of um, context and stuff missing. So I hope this helps uh, with with people when they see something like this, you know. And and I'm trying to view this from an objective point of view and trying to explain it as clear as possible. Because when I see something like this, I don't see magic, you know. I I'm, of course it it looks magical. I get it, and and I see that his technique is incredible. It's I, I, can, I can't do anything that he's doing here, even though I studied Aikido on and off for about um, four years. But I can tell you, you know, I, I can't do that 100%. But, you know, I don't see this super Superman, this Yoda. I don't see that. You know, I see real, you know, real life stuff. And, and it makes sense to me. So I'm just trying to share that with you guys. So anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for viewing and take care, folks.